This is the third or fourth year I think I've done one of these now and for those of you who've had to listen to me bore on before, you'll know I always like to kind of talk about the future of digital advertising, kind of where we're going um, and also try and break it down, make it a little more accessible. Um, and this year I wanted to do the same um, but rather than kind of focus on something new like omnichannel attribution or programmatic, I wanted to root it in something that has been in marketing since day one, which is testing. Um, so we are going to talk about the future of digital marketing, but it is grounded in something that we all do every day. So the title, Testing is Dead, Long Live Testing, I'll be honest, I wrote the title before I wrote the presentation, um, and uh, I just thought it was a good title. But hopefully by the end of it, it will make sense uh, why testing is dead, but also still very much alive. Um, so, when I joined Jellyfish six years ago, this is one of the very first things I was shown, which is the mantra of test, analyze, refine. And anyone who's been here for a few years is probably looking at this now with shivers because it was drilled into us that, you know, we always have to be testing, then analyzing the results of that test, refining and starting the test again. Now, it's a very good mantra and it's still very applicable, um, but at its core, it's basically as simple as saying we're going to test a couple of ads or we're going to test two landing pages, we're going to analyze the results, refine and start the test again. A very simple example would be something like this. So here we have two uh, Google ads. We have one that says save £10 and one that says save 50%. The test being we're going to send half the people to a monetary saving, half the people to a percentage saving, see which one wins, analyze the results and then start a new test. And in the new test we're then uh, testing today versus this week. So, you know, the very simple things of testing, it's a very basic test, but one clear thing that is being tested, look at the results, try and find statistical significance if we can, and then move on to another test. Now, I'm sure this is pretty familiar to everyone in here, and again, this is what, you know, test, analyze, refine is, is rooted in. Uh, one thing with it, I think it's got kind of out of hand in one sense in that we almost now have a fear of not testing. It's like we have to test all the time. If we stop testing for even two minutes, then we're not learning, we're not getting better, we have to always be testing. Um, so again, uh, what I'm here today to say is that this type of testing is dead. Um, now, that's a little controversial, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, what are you on about? We've got 100 of these tests running right now, um, but hopefully it will all make sense as I go through it. Um, so, if we look at that test again, so our very simple A-B test, and again, we might send 50% of people to one ad, 50% to the other, and try and pick a winner. Um, now, this is a lot of testing we do, and by the way, when I point this out, this is by no means saying, haha, this is all wrong and what you're doing is wrong. We do this, I've been doing this for years, and it is by no means wrong. Um, the kind of thing we would say with this kind of testing is something like this. So we ran monetary saving messaging versus percentage saving messaging and found that the former generated the better response. Data showed that people responded better to monetary saving messaging than percentage saving messaging. And I'm sure everyone looking at that is the kind of thing we see in presentations, the kind of thing we'd agree with and the kind of thing we'd be very happy with at the end of a test. The problem with marketing now and the problem with where it's going is there's one thing wrong with that and it's that bit. People respond better to. Because what this test is fundamentally doing is taking all people, all of our audience, every single user, dividing them in two, showing one to one, one to the other, and then picking one winner and saying, well, that one works for everyone. Which, when you say it out loud like that, instantly you go, okay, well, maybe it doesn't. Because it might be that ad one worked really well for one person and ad two worked well for another, but then other people might respond to something completely different. Equally, if you take these two ads and pick one winner and apply it to everyone, say 100 people saw this ad uh, and 60 picked one and 40 picked the other, so you're just picking a winner and saying, well, 60 people like that one ad, so we'll now just show it to all 100. And again, and I'm not saying this is any bad thing, this is how we've been testing for years, and it's how we've had to test, it's how we've had to get marginal gains and keep testing and refining and, and you know, getting better. Um, but if we look at how kind of thought leaders your Googles, your Facebooks, and everything like that are looking at marketing now, it would be something more like this. And I apologize for a long quote. Those of you who've seen my talks before know I don't really like text on screen, but I had to put this in. Um, basically, this is Google saying, consider two people who are searching for Thai food, and one person searches for Thai food at 5 p.m. from a desktop in an office on a weekday, and the other person searches for Thai food at 9 p.m. on a weekend <laughs> walking through the middle of town. So those two people have searched the exact same thing, but the intent is very different. 
one person might be looking for recipes to go home and cook, and the other person might be looking for restaurants near them. So traditionally, we would have no way of distinguishing between those two people if we throw it back a few years, and we would run the kind of test I was just showing. We might run two ads, one that says, you know, Thai food recipes, one that says Thai food restaurants near you, pick a winner and apply it to all people. But again, if we pick that winner and apply it to all people, it still doesn't take away from the fact that one person was looking for recipes and one was looking for restaurants. So as Google say, historically markers would have no way of distinguishing between these two consumers, but with data, marketers can be immediately relevant. And that's where we're going. Google's mantra with this whole thing is right person, right message, right time, every time. So the point is, it shouldn't be one generic message to everyone that kind of works slightly better than another generic message. It should be the right message to the user at the right time. And we have the data to figure that out. <laughs> I read an interesting stat that a colleague of mine sent me the other day, which was that in 2017 alone, in that one year, we collected more data about people in the world than the last 50,000 years. We have more data about people than ever before, and we can use that data to make sure we serve that right message at the right time. So with that in mind, how can we have people respond better to monetary saving messaging than percentage saving messaging alongside right person, right message, right time, every time. How can we have those two statements together? Well, we can't. <laughs> or at least that's where it's going. Um, and I say that we can't because that is where all the thought leaders are taking us. That is where the Google and the Facebook and everything are going. They're saying you need to move away from this uh, one worked better than the other and look more at right person, right message, right moment. Um, all of these companies are now looking at it that way. And that's why I wanted to talk about this today. This is not me coming in and saying that you absolutely have to change all the way you do all your ad testing. My point is more of a warning of this is the way the industry is going. This is where all of these channels are taking us. So if we look at, say, a few examples, we have uh, Bing dynamic search ads. Google have the same thing as well. Um, and dynamic search ads will let you put in a description. But then what they will do is populate a headline and even choose a different landing page on your site for the user based on that user's previous search history, based on what they've done on your site already, which means 10 people might all search for a similar thing, but all 10 might be delivered completely different headlines and completely different landing pages. Google are now taking it one step further. Um, I don't know how many people know about this. It's quite new. It was released at Google's last marketing live um, promotion, and basically this is responsive search ads. And what's quite funny about this one is Google were actually the ones that I remember six years ago when I started at Jellyfish, they were the ones saying you always have to have two ads in every ad group. You always have to have two, and you always have to be testing one element. And now what Google are saying is actually, you know what, give us 15 different headlines and two to four different descriptions and a URL, and we will use machine learning to come up with thousands of combinations and test them all in a matter of seconds. But not only are we testing them, we're not testing them to find the winner. You know, we're not gonna come to you at the end of this test and say this was the best ad. What we're going to do is just pick out the right ad for the right person at the right time. So one person might respond well to an ad with one headline, one description, and a URL. Another person might respond well to an ad with three headlines and two descriptions. But it's not going to show you that. It's not going to say, here's your winner that works for everyone. Take the learnings. It's just going to say, well, we're just going to programmatically serve the right ad to the right person. Taking it further, um, dynamic remarketing. So Facebook, Google, Bing, they're all <laughs> jumping on this now as well. And it's the same kind of concept. What Facebook will do now is use its pixel to look at where the user has been, what the user is interested in, and also what they've done on your site. And then it will programmatically design an ad for that person. So again, every person is going to see a slightly different ad. It might have different imagery and different headlines and different descriptions. But it's going to be right for that person. Um, and finally, if we jump onto the site, because also we do a lot of A-B testing on sites where we maybe test red CTAs versus blue CTAs at its basic level, um, but Google's doing the same thing. So where we had Google Analytics A-B test, which was simply a case of 50% of traffic to one, 50% to the other, Google Optimize is now saying, hang on, we're going to pull in data, and it might be that we serve one version of your landing page to a female who's 25 on a desktop and a different version to a male who's 35 on a mobile. And again, make sure that it's the right landing page for the right person. So what I mean by testing is dead is that the way things are going, the idea of this manual testing, the idea of starting with the thought of we want to know if X works better than Y, that 
is dying out. This idea of ad one, ad two, we're then gonna pick a winning ad and we're gonna serve that winning ad to the user no matter what. Instead, favorite slide, we're gonna have testing on steroids. Uh, <laughs> this is my goal pick for summer 2019. Uh, instead, what we're gonna have is thousands of micro tests at every moment, pulling in thousands of data signals. You know, Google are quite open in saying that we give you access to six or seven data signals, things like age, uh, gendered um, location, but we're actually in the background secretly using thousands to figure out way more stuff about people. And it's gonna use all of these, not to pick the winning ad to serve to all users, but to pick the right ad for each individual user at every moment. So, like I say, it's not that all testing is dead, it's that manual testing in a way is dying off and instead automated testing is coming in in a big way. And what that looks like kind of visually here, which is better than looking at my creepy Photoshop, is that in the past we would have, say, a generic message to everyone and you would test that generic message, so you would split that, you know, that generic message in half and say, well, we'll serve 50% of people one and 50% the other. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still going to end up picking a generic message to serve to all of them, whereas now it's all about customising that individual message for each person. So... I see some scared faces. Uh, <laughs> what do we do now? And again, I bring this up not as a right tomorrow, you have to stop all of your tests because this is where it goes. I bring it up because when we look at what Google and Facebook and Bing and the thought leaders in the online marketing industry are releasing, it is these type of products. Again, I've read many articles over the last few weeks which is all basically saying RSA, responsive search ads, is the next step in Google making everything automated in, inside. It's rather than you having to pick out these manual tests, they're just gonna do it for you. So what do we do? Uh, well, the first thing is let it go. <laughs> And it's difficult. And again, I say this to you not as you as publishers need to let it go. This is also a message internally for my team. I've got a few scared faces in the back as well now. Um, we also have to let it go. And what I mean by let it go is that, um, you know, the way we've thought for maybe the last 10, 15 years of running, say, PPC and online marketing is our testing starts with that thought of <laughs> let's test A versus B and find a winner and move on. But even by starting with that thought of let's find out which one works best, you've already started wrong, according to this new way of working, because there isn't one that works best. There isn't a winner. So it's not, let's find if A works better than B, because A might work for one person, B for another, C for another, D for another. So we have to almost have a mind shift away from that way of thinking of, you know, we have to find a winner, we have to test, we have to find a winner, and then we have to move on to the next test. We are still gonna test, but we have to almost let the you know, robots take over a little bit in a way and let them do the testing for us. So what we also then need to do is adapt, <laughs> improvise, and overcome any excuse to use a meme. Um, and what I mean by that is it's a bit of a shift in the way we work. So for example, um, if we look at, say, SEO, so I used to work in SEO a few years ago, and the way SEO saw a bit of a shift is it was a very creative process. Most SEO was creative. And now you'll find that a lot of creative is almost development to an extent. It's very tech heavy. Um, and this is going in a similar way. So where before, you know, say my team, for example, who do a lot of ad testing as it stands at the moment, um, before they might have spent a lot of time coming up with different ad headlines, coming up with different approaches, rather than having that creative element of let's come up with a load of different ad tests, it might be now that the focus is on, well, we need to make sure our data is built in the right way. We need to make sure our Google Floodlight tags are perfect and our data layers on our site are spot on and our product listing ads in shopping are spot on and all our feeds are right so that we can feed all the information in in the best way so that Google and Bing and Facebook can optimize it to the max, as it were. The other thing with that as well is that it's not just a case of saying, well, okay, therefore, is it not creative anymore? Because the creative elements are still in coming up with the brand voice, the whole way the brand is positioned. What it's moving away from is letting you know, data within, say, an AdWords account make those brand decisions for you. You can still be creative. You still have to develop your brand voice. You still have to decide what offers you want to come up with and what you want to run. But it's just letting go of the reins a little bit and handing over to Google and Facebook to actually do the testing and figure out what works best for each person. So if we do manage to let it go uh, and we do overcome, there are benefits, obviously, which is good. Um, so firstly, the time save. Um, anyone who's worked in this industry for a few years will have spent hours and hours and hours on 
small tests. And I don't mean to belittle them. Obviously, these tests have been great, and they've been the way that we've moved forward. But they do take a lot of time. And a lot of the time, they take a lot of time with very little return. And we can kind of be constantly doing small tests without getting that much out of them. With this, where, it, you know, say if you were to run a split test between two ads, and you say, OK, we're going to run that split test 50-50 for two weeks to get a decent amount of data to make a decision. In that two-week period, you've basically made one decision. You've run two ads and come to one conclusion. In that same two-week period, say responsive search ads have probably run 10,000 different variations of your ads. And they've come up with millions of micro decisions to make sure the right user got the right ad at the right time. Um, and with that saving time, it means that we can focus on the bigger picture. As I said, for me, the big shift here is moving away from focusing on those kind of siloed small tests and focusing on the bigger position of how do we position the brand? How do we get everything in the best possible position technically so that we can make the most out of what these advertising channels can do? Um, I also think there's less risk of testing. Obviously, at Jellyfish, everything we do is perfect 100% of the time, and it would be no different. But Risk, you know, there is risk involved in setting up manual testing. Spelling mistakes in ads happen. Um, wrong landing pages are used where you have broken 404 links. Christmas ad copies get found a few weeks later. It does happen because it's all manual and it takes a lot of time and effort to, to do all that. Whereas if your ad has been you know, dynamically generated based off what the user actually looked at and searched, well, there is still some risk, but the risk is mitigated because you're not in control of every one of those elements. Um, and the other one for me is with this is it's, it kind of gets rid of that wondering of are the test results actually right? Again, with a lot of the testing that we do, I think we can't help it as humans to go into a test with a mindset of we think this one's going to win or we want this one to win. And then if the results aren't quite right, there's always the doubt of, yeah, but if just a couple of people had done the other thing, would it have been better? And do we need to test it again a year later? Or you know what I mean? It can, it can get very kind of blurry with that if we're not quite sure. Whereas again, with this, it's just giving that control back over. Um, and finally, better results. So I purposely, in this presentation, when I was showing dynamic search ads, responsive search ads, Google Optimize, I didn't want to put results next to them. Because I'm not coming to you with this presentation to say, I think you should all drop what you're doing and do this. It's more to say, this is the way I see the industry going. So I can give you results to say, yes, when we've tested these new products, it works well. But the point is, it doesn't really matter whether it works well or not in one sense, because this is where we're going. However, the good news is, where we have run, say, responsive search ads, we have seen a massive increase in click-through rate of ads. Where we run dynamic search ads, we've seen massive Massive increases in um, visibility online and conversions, and where we're using Google Optimize, we're getting some great results. So uh, I'm pretty sure there aren't going to be any questions because what? Well, why would there? Um, but that's pretty much it. The like I say, the thing to take away from this is um, it's not tomorrow you need to go back and change all the testing you're doing. It's more be aware that this is the way the industry is going. That it's moving away from the manual and moving more to the automated. And that's me. We do have...